Oh yeah, welcome to your 21st Java tutorial guys uh, for game development. What we're going to get into in today's tutorial is making our, you know, our collision mean something, changing the aspect of our gameplay um, after our ball collides with the item. So what we're first going to need to do is go into the item class and down here for this check for collision, again we get passed in the ball information. Um, again we only have one ball in our game, uh, that's our main player object and we get that information here. What we're going to do is we're going to say if we have a collision, again we set up this if statement, we're going to perform an action and again this is just for the base item class. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say hey we want this action um, that we're going to perform to do something to our, our player. So uh, we want to pass in the information of our ball as well. So we're going to say uh, pass in B Again, that's the label that we have passed into our check for collision method. So we're just going to say perform action B and then we're getting an error because we don't have a method that takes a ball within its parameters. So we're going to go down to our action perform method here and just say uh, ball B and uh, there we go. Um, now we have a collision uh, or action perform method uh, set up. So that's what we need to do uh, so far. Um, so now we're going to go into our gravity up object um, or gravity up item again that we set up and we're going to just hit control space and we're going to go down to that new method that we just set up uh, perform action that takes in the ball parameter and what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, well it doesn't really matter if we relate to the super um, because again our super method within our item class doesn't really do anything so we can just take that out and what we want to do is we're going to relate to the ball B and we're going to say uh, set gravity and what, we're, what are we going to set the gravity to? Well we're going to get the gravity of the ball first so we're going to say B dot get gravity uh, plus like three something like that. So now when we save this uh, oh and then another thing that we have to fix actually go to our item class and we'll go back down to the check for collision and with Again, if there is a collision, if C is less than collide, we're going to perform the action, but we also want to set the X and Y value of our um, item itself to be uh, zero. And we're going to set our Y information below our applet, so our item is just going across the screen, but it's below our applet, so our ball won't ever hit it. So we're going to set our Y equal to the height of our applet, so we're going to say SP we're going to say dot get height. We're going to have to make an adjustment here in a second. Um, so we're just going to get the height of our applet plus a 100. And you guys can copy this here because we're going to refer to that later. Um, but now what we need to do is we need to set up this SP variable so our whole class can use this. Again, within our constructor or update method, I should say, uh, we have this SP referring to our applet. So we're just going to go up and we're going to create a new starting point class or object, I'm sorry, a private uh, starting point point object, call it SP as well. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go into our update method and we're just going to say this SP, referring to that variable we just set up, equal to the SP that's being passed in um, through our update method. And now it's going to update our SP and if there's a collision it's going to refer to the applet's height plus 100 so it's going to be below our applet by 100 pixels um, and then the next thing that we want to do is we're going to go into our actual game uh, class which is just called starting point so what we want to do in this class is go down to a run method and we're going to check if you know if our uh, if our item has moved to the bottom or you know 100 pixels below our applet um, and if that's the case we're going to redefine what our item is we're going to we're going to check for each one of our items see where the current y position is so we're just going to set up an int i equal to b zero and uh, for i is less than item dot length and again item or um, item is our item array that we have so this is just returning three and then what we're going to do is say item plus plus. So now all we're doing is cycling through each one of our items within our item menu and uh, or our item array. What am I talking about? So we're going to set up our if statement and we're going to refer to the item that we're currently cycling through. So we're going to say if item i dot uh, 
dot get y is equal to and we're going to say get height referring to our applet or we can say this uh, dot get height and then we're going to say plus 100 which is again that same uh, y position that we set up um, in that previous class so we're going to say if that's the case what we're going to do is we're going to set up item i uh, to be a oops item i we're going to set that equal to be null and then eventually we'll recreate a random item but as for now we're just going to set up a new item um, again in the same position within our array and we're going to say new gravity up item and we're going to say get width of our applet so just to make sure it's working alright so again we're just passing in a random x position um, or actually not a random x position we're passing in the x position as the width of our applet um, so there we go we should have everything set up uh, let's run this again if you guys are getting an error right here this get y what you're gonna have to do is go into the item class and set up these getters and setters and again a simple way to do that if you have private variables or I believe any type of variables you can just hit right click go down to source and say generate getters and setters and now you know or they'll create a window like this and then you can create a getter and setter for each variable that you have within your class so SP radius DX um, all that good stuff and I already set up you know these ones X Y or X and Y I should say so it didn't give me those options but just check X and Y or just Y if you want and then you can refer to that method within our starting point class so I know we covered a lot of things in this tutorial and we went kinda quick um, let's run this make sure it works sorry I had to clip out the video there I forgot my wild true within my thread run method um, so I was like what's going on um, but anyways what we've done so far in this tutorial it was I know just kind of copied code from whatever I typed out kinda of went quickly but uh, nothing really new uh, we changed I'm trying to get one of these guys see if it changes our gravity a little bit as you can see your gravity you know goes up so it doesn't bounce as high and it gets harder and harder as we get these gravity up objects um, but again we didn't really do too much in this tutorial guys uh, we just you know set up the basic uh, item and eventually we'll set up some more items I'll probably show you how to set up one more item um, just so you guys get familiar with it and then obviously I'll have you know the final project source code on my bringback.com that you guys can download but uh, besides that all we did was set up an item it's kind of basic um, nothing no new concepts so I know we went kind of quick and you guys just kind of copied but I thought I'd at least show you how to set up one item and I'll probably show you how to set up another item um, and then I'll leave you guys to making the rest of the items um, but anyways alright so uh, that's pretty much pretty much it for this tutorial I kinda forgot what I was talking about because this game's so awesome um, but anyways that's the basic concepts for an item that uh, we are doing anyways and it, now it uh, makes our game a little bit more challenging we can't bounce as high and I hope you enjoyed and have a good one see you later